Hi, Jessica. How are you? Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm well. Nice to meet you. Nikki Fowler with Glitter Magazine. It's a pleasure to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you, Nikki. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So I want to jump into everything in Canto, but I want to first start by asking you a little bit about yourself, how you got into acting, what was your inspiration, and just how did it all start? Um... Oh gosh, let's see. I um I've really been doing this as as long as I can remember. Um, I've just always been loud and animated and a little obnoxious. <laughs> um, I've just always I love playing pretend since a young age. Um, you know, we actually had a lot of uh, assignments in class where we had to do a lot of creative writing, and I would go out of my way to make sure that uh, these creative writing pieces were performable, and I would, like, force my class to watch me just, like, do these stories in front of everyone. This is, like, middle school, or this is elementary school, and, um, yeah, I received the opportunity to go to um, a magnet arts performing middle school and um, started doing theater there, and I feel like once I played Captain Hook in Peter Pan in the seventh grade, it was kind of a set path from there on. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> you see me as Captain Hook, right? right? <laughs> Absolutely. Just as long as you know I'm transformable. Yeah. <laughs> so Encanto is such an enchanting, mystical, beautiful film um, about family. So can you just give us a little background on the Madrigal family in Colombia and how it centers around, around them? So basically, the uh, um, the Madriga family is the magical family in this town, the people in this community of people. And because they have these exceptional gifts, it is up to them to basically kind of keep the community afloat. Um, I don't want to give anything away, but you find out uh, at some point in the movie um, kind of why things are the way they are. But people, the the people in this family are born into it, you know, without being able to choose the fact that they have to receive these magical gifts at a certain age. And it therefore kind of places a burden on the family, but it's a burden that they are supposed to be proud to carry. And they very much are. Uh, but then there are moments throughout the film where everyone kind of has the realization of, am I more than just the role that society and my family has placed on me? And uh, God, it's so beautiful in that way. The message that the film conveys most of all is, you know, what are we without these assigned roles? And um, and is it enough? And uh yeah, it's it's really finding the beauty in just in just our hearts and themselves and our character. Absolutely. Yeah. And can, you, can you tell us without giving away too much a little bit about Louisa? I mean, she's breaking stereotypes. I don't want to give that away. But um, and also um, we love a feel good story. So how did you land the role of Louisa? Just a little bit about her character. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, we we definitely don't got to give too much away but it's like east or louisa is what she is she's uh she's clearly the rock of the family and uh her super strength her super power is um well they're not powers they're gifts uh and her special gift is super strength so you know she uh breaks so many stereotypes actually you know uh by being a woman who has to be strong physically and also emotionally, but also maybe doesn't look like, oh, like stereotypically beautiful, but very much feels beautiful. And like, she is hot and has it going on and knows that she can handle everything. And uh, she just kind of is always keeping it cool on the surface. Meanwhile, there's a lot going on inside. There's a very big emotional life there. And um, yeah, you, you, uh, you get to experience a moment where uh, she sees what happens if maybe she lets it out and what that might mean for her and her role in the family, uh, mm -hmm. which is really exciting. And honestly, a a journey that I feel like I relate to in a lot of ways as well. And, and you know, this segues into how I received the role and what a thoughtful audition process it was. Both Jared and Byron were so amazing while casting this, just asking all the right questions about how I felt my personal uh, family dynamic was like and, and the role that I played within it. And um, finding out throughout the course that I really do relate to Louisa in a lot of ways, you know, we kind of just, we got the tough exterior with the 
squishy, gushy crybaby center. <laughs> and uh, if the right person comes along or the right moment or question comes along, we might just maybe let it out. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I definitely wear my heart on my sleeve more than Louisa does. You could catch me crying anytime. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, God, I mean, I, I've been working on this through the pandemic and it's been an absolute gift. I feel like throughout building... Louisa's character, I certainly built my own as well. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, and music is such a big part of the film. I stayed till the very end of the credits. Good. Right? <laughs> um, you have to. You want to hear all the songs, even the credit songs. Yes, everything. And Louisa has this so song, you know, on strength and expectations. Um, what do you hope fans take away from, from this, this song? Mm, well, first of all, I hope they dance their butt off, first and foremost, um, <laughs> because it's literally a music video. And yeah. what Disney does so well is, you know, they're, they're giving you these very heavy, important messages that we have to ingest, but they, they serve it to you on, on a gorgeous silver platter, where it's like, wow, I didn't even realize how important this was for me to know. Meanwhile, you're like dancing with a bunch of, uh, you know, singing donkeys, not to that away but uh you know there's and there's there's dancing and and fun and and uh, you know it's uh it's it's the latino way you know it, when things get hard turn the music up a little bit louder Absolutely. and uh, yeah that's what that's what i love about this film it's really it's letting you all know uh that though there's definitely a darkness that everyone's got inside of them or maybe they want to speak up or share something you know we're not alone and it's important to speak up and know that you've actually got a lot more support around you than you might realize because more people are sharing the same experience than you think it's important to communicate. I hope people take that away from it. Um, and also uh, that, yeah, don't be afraid to be different. And if, if you think that being yourself is different than the norm, then so be it because that stuff is uh, cool and it's sexy and it's authentic and it's the new frontier baby is being you, so. Yes, absolutely. You yeah. mentioned you mentioned COVID. Um, were there any challenges? I, I heard that Lynn mentioned on the premiere on uh, the carpet that this is the first time he's seeing a lot of the talent. So were there any challenges in being directed over Zoom? You know, I I it was challenging because I wanted to hug everyone. Jeez. Uh, so that was hard. But you know what? It's it was a different experience. It was my first experience doing voiceover in this capacity and in this way, um, doing a feature length film. So, but it was also my first time doing it like while I'm working with a team over Zoom. And uh, though it was strange at first, we adapted pretty quickly. And if anything, I felt like we had even more of an opportunity to be more thoughtful, have a longer, deeper conversations because we also knew we were overcompensating for the fact that we couldn't be together. So everyone was listening very carefully and it felt like a, it felt like a very thoughtful, wonderful process. And it, it saved me in a lot of ways, you know, I didn't know if I'd ever, I'd ever be able to work on art again, if I'd ever be able to make anything in the yeah. same way again. And here we are just um, proving, proving all of those theories and fears wrong. And uh, I feel so lucky to be able to be a part of that. Nice. Um, yeah. Well, Glitter Magazine, we have a celebrity self-love campaign we started way back in 2015. Love it! <laughs> yes. Um, so we want to ask you not only, you know, what does self-love mean to you, but also um, how does it align with your character? Oh, wow. What a great question. Um, well, let's see. I think what I said earlier about, as I was discovering Luisa's character, I was also um, discovering and, and building mine. I, I feel like I really had a year of self-love. I think a lot of us had to, had to come to terms with the fact that, listen, while we're in our, like, you know, most alone moments, it was quarantine, we were by ourselves, we didn't have access to the world in, in uh, the normal ways we really had to show up for ourselves. And I think what self-love is, is, you know, I am someone who definitely suffers from anxiety and I have to be patient and gentle with myself and make sure I remember to turn off the critical voice and know that like, hey, all of these like worries and things that are spiraling in my head, while I may not have access to the things that I absolutely like think I need right now are not real. And I can go ahead and, 
be chill and enjoy myself. I can take a bath. I can call a friend. I um, find a lot of uh, joy and um, uh, support in a lot of my uh, even platonic relationships as well, like my parents and my family. And, um, you know, I guess it's just being able to reach out to those people, but also know that like you have everything you need inside of you uh, to just keep going and you know I think Louisa definitely realizes you know because she's like gosh what what would I be if I if I wasn't just my skill set mm -hmm. and uh, she realizes that people love to be around her and they love her heart regardless and um, I think I kind of had a moment of that self-discovery as well this year so mm -hmm. I'd say that that's what self-love means to me is um, knowing that you know it's it's already there the people who love you and know you are not like they're always going to be there all you have to do is make sure that you show up for yourself and when you know that you're good and you feel good you can be present and in the moment and um that's like the best version of being you right is just uh, yeah. being able to listen and take in life presently and uh, yeah, just know that it's all good. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so yeah. much for sharing that. And yeah. where can uh, fans connect with you when you are on social? What's your social of choice? Yes. Well, you can find me on Instagram. That's at Jess Darrow underscore. Uh, and Twitter, I'm uh, at it me, Jess Darrow. And uh, you can find me on TikTok too, okay. <laughs> which is also <laughs> just Darrow underscore. I'm doing some funny dances and voices on there. So nice, nice. <laughs> well, thank yeah. you so much. And congrats again um, on sharing your, your creative spirit with us with Encanto and uh, good luck with everything uh, that's next for you. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure speaking today. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye.